Well, here we are. After years of waiting, we are finally getting a sequel to Ghost of Tsushima. However, this time, instead of continuing Jin's story, we are moving on to a completely new setting, Mount Yote, which is located far to the north in Hokkaido. Now, I will admit, I am a little bit bummed about this. I was hoping that a sequel to Ghost of Tsushima would in fact continue Jin's story and would lead us perhaps to Kyushu during the second Mongol invasion, where more drama and conflict between clans could also have been woven into the story. Yet I guess that is not what Sucker Punch wanted to do. Rather, as an article on PlayStation.com says, they liked the idea better of focusing on the ghost aspect. And I guess they felt, and rightfully so, that it doesn't have to only ever be Jin Sakai. So instead, we are now getting thrown a little over 300 years into the future, and sent far, far to the north. Our main protagonist is now a woman named Atsu, and currently we know very little about her character. Really, the only major hints at what is going on for her are mentioned in the trailer, when another warrior says how she is hunting but also being hunted by many other ronin in the area. So while I do want to speculate a bit more about what is going on here in the game, I think it first might be good if we explored just a bit more about the setting. What is the world of pre-modern Japan and the island of Hokkaido like in 1603, when the game takes place? Well, as many of you are probably already well aware, 1603 is an important year. It is the year which marked the birth of the Tokugawa shogunate, the Edo Bakufu, as Tokugawa Ieyasu was to be officially granted the title of shogun. It is three years after the Great Battle of Sekigahara in 1600, where Ieyasu essentially won control of the country by crushing and scattering his rivals. Japan is on the verge of a new era, as the violent and chaotic Sengoku period is drawing to a close, and the peaceful Edo period is set to begin. Hokkaido, on the other hand, is an interesting choice to set the game. Only a portion of Hokkaido, or what was often called Ezo, was actually ruled by the samurai. This was dominantly the Matsume clan, yet based on how Ghost of Tsushima tweaked a lot of the names of significant families, I doubt the Matsume will actually make an appearance, but we'll see. Much of the island was actually inhabited by the Ainu, who many believe to be descended from the Amishi, and often shared many traits typical to those of Siberian people. There would even be a series of Ainu rebellions which would take place over the years. Truly, this was Japan's only real land border, Japan's only frontier for many years, as the rest of Hokkaido would not be seized until really the late 1800s. This brings me to speculation time. So, who is our main character, Atsu? Really, I have no idea. Originally, I thought that perhaps she was a woman of the samurai class, fleeing north after the destruction of her family following the Sekigahara conflict. And while this still could be true, the shamisen on her back portrays her as more of an entertainer of sorts, perhaps. It's puzzling, and I know we will likely learn more soon. The setting itself is also interesting based on what is said in the trailer about Ronin in the area as if it is trying to portray that there are many ronin up in Hokkaido at this time. To be honest, I've never heard of really any massive influx of ronin being in Hokkaido, at least not prior to the brief establishment of the Republic of Ezo many years later. Now, once again, could it be an interesting plot point weaving in the idea of an influx of ronin in the aftermath of the Sekigahara conflict? Sure. And I think that is all right for storytelling purposes. There were a lot of new ronin at this time, as whole clans were being snuffed out. So it's not a big stretch for the story to say that there were a lot of ronin who simply decided to wander up to the north. But we also have to remember, and perhaps I think this is the most important thing we should keep in mind, Hokkaido is still Ainu country. We should not be seeing tons and tons of typical Japanese sites, along with architecture and monuments like they squeezed into Tsushima. We should be seeing much more details both architecturally and also culturally of the Ainu all over the place in this game. If we don't, I think it might come off as perhaps a bit insulting. If they try to force an over-the-top image of stereotypical Japan onto an area that at this time was very much not stereotypical Japan, 
Like I've been saying though, we'll just have to wait and see. The last thing I do want to touch on is, once again, the character of Atsu. And I know this is just my personal feelings about her as a character. Now, there has been some buzz for quite a while that the next lead character in the Ghost of Tsushima series, or perhaps just Ghost series now, was going to be a woman. Now, there is nothing wrong with this. Playing as female warriors in samurai games is nothing new at all. We've been doing it for decades. However, what I do hope is that they can convincingly portray to us how she became a warrior. As you might already know, I'm not a fan at all of the stereotypical Hollywood ninja approach that they are doing with Nawe for Assassin's Creed Shadows. Women warriors in Japan were a bit of a rare thing, as we have discussed plenty of times in the past. More often than not, they were utilized during desperate times. So if we are playing as a female, it needs to be properly set up as to why. Where did she come from? How did she acquire her training? Does it all make sense? If we were playing as simply a regular male samurai, we don't need to answer many of these same questions. And I get it. This is a game, and they can bend whatever rules they want. But there is also a level of immersion that is different for each of us. And for me, details like this are ones that can make or break it for me. To be honest, this is one of the many reasons why I vastly prefer games where you are able to create your own custom character, because then if you want to go that route, you can just create your own character and do your own thing. I think I was pretty spoiled with Rise of the Ronin, not gonna lie. Now, I could go on, but I really don't need to, I think I made my point clear. So anyways, these are my initial thoughts of Ghost of Yote. It definitely looks interesting, but there is still a lot more we have to learn. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this quick video and learned more about the setting where this game is going to be taking place. With that said, I would love to hear your thoughts. Are you excited for Ghost of Yote? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most interesting.